So the uh, vitamin C and all the B vitamins are water soluble. And because they're water soluble, it's, it's pretty hard to overdose on them. You'd, you'd have to be intentionally taking a lot of vitamins to do that. Because whatever your body doesn't need, it just flushes out in your urine. The fat soluble vitamins, um, you have to be a little more careful with because your body stores it in your fatty tissue. And so you can overdose on fat soluble vitamins. Um, vitamin A not vitamins A, just vitamin A, are, I gotta get rid of that. Um, there are preformed forms and uh, precursor forms. So for uh, the preformed vitamin A, there's a group called, they're called retinoids. And they differ in this R group over here on the end. So retinol, retinal, retinoic acid, depending on what functional group is over here. If we look at the structure of this, does it make sense that this is a fat-soluble molecule? This is almost entirely hydrocarbon, isn't it? It's just carbons and hydrogens over here. The only polar groups are over here on the end, and because this is so large, we, we could look at that and say, yeah, that's probably not soluble in water. So your body, uh, you can get retinal esters of these different retinoids from animal-based foods, like meat, milk, cheese, eggs, things like that. And then your body can hydrolyze the ester to make the retinoid. There are also plant-based foods that provide us with what we need to make vitamin A. And these provide um, carotenoids. You may have heard of uh, beta carotene. Um, orange colored vegetables tend to have a lot of beta carotene in them. This is the structure of beta carotene. And when it is cleaved here, you get two molecules of vitamin A from this one molecule of beta carotene. So your body has to do a little bit more to the carotenoids. But then with all of them, what? I guess I'm thinking of something else. Never mind. So what does vitamin A do? Well, it plays a role in vision. Uh, retinal, the aldehyde form, combine, combines with a, a protein called opsin that makes the uh, visual pigment rhodopsin, and that's what participates in converting the light energy that comes into your eye into nerve pulses, which go to your brain and give us our, our sense of vision. They also participate in regulating cell differentiation. This is the process where an immature cell becomes um, a specialized cell. So you've got this immature general cell, and it can be made into a cell that does one thing or another or another, and the vitamin A functions in that regulation. The retinoic acid binds to protein receptors making a complex, and then that complex binds to regulatory regions of the DNA, which tell the cell what it should become. It's a little bit like, you know, okay, you're going to be a doctor, and you're going to be a trash collector, and you're going to be a rock star, right? So the DNA through the retinoic acid and the protein is telling these cells what they're going to become. Other functions include uh, maintenance of healthy epithelial, epithelial tissues, <coughs> this is getting way far into biology for me. Um, epithelial tissues include your skin, lining of your internal cavities, and, and you know, like you station tubes and things like that. Um, if you don't have enough retinoic acid, um, those surfaces become drier and harder, and then they're not going to function as well. And the reason that vitamin A has anything to do with this is because, again, of the cell differentiation. Um, the, the lack of vitamin A will uh, cause you to not get enough mucus secreting cells, which will make things dry and hard. Uh, reproduction and growth. Uh, retinoic acid, which is a form of vitamin A, participates in sperm growth. It's also needed in normal fetal development, and these functions are also, again, related to cell differentiation. Um, vitamin D. There are two main forms, D2 and D3. Vitamin D3 is also called cholecalciferol. 
Um, this is produced by your skin um, when it is exposed to sunlight. So in your skin, you have 7-dehydrocholesterol. Um, so this is a normal metabolite of cholesterol that is in your skin. When it is exposed to UV light, it is converted to pre-vitamin D3, which then spontaneously converts to vitamin D3. And, you know, people have gotten the message, you need to use sunscreen, but now we're seeing people with vitamin D deficiencies because they use sunscreen all the time and they're not getting enough sunshine. So, again, balance, moderation. Uh, vitamin D2 is only different in the side chain. So here's vitamin D, and the difference between D2 and D3 is just what the side chain is. And these guys are really similar. D2 is produced from a plant sterol. D3 was from um, an animal sterol, cholesterol. And this is also uh, requires sunshine. Both of these forms undergo two hydroxylation steps before they're fully functional. So this is vitamin D, but then it, um, it gets hydroxylated before it actually functions. And what is its function? Maintenance of normal blood levels of calcium and phosphate ions. In order for your bones to stay strong, you have to have calcium and phosphate ions available in the blood at appropriate levels, and that's what vitamin D does. <coughs> vitamin E getting through the alphabet now. Um, um, these are tocopherols. Um, there's four forms, but two of them are most common. Uh, the alpha is the most active, and the gamma tocopherol is the, the main form that we find in foods. And they're going to differ in these two R groups over here. So there's a little table here showing the difference between the alpha, beta, delta, and gamma. Vitamin E functions primarily as an antioxidant. So it protects the polyunsaturated fatty acids in your membrane lipids, and it also protects the vitamin A from being oxidized. And it does that by getting oxidized itself. So then what happens to the oxidized vitamin E? Well, it turns out that vitamin C reduces the vitamin E so that it can go and, and do its job some more. Uh, vitamin E is especially important in the lungs. There's a lot of oxygen um, in the lung tissue, and oxygen causes oxidation, strangely enough. So it's very important that you have enough uh, vitamin E in your lung tissue. Vitamin K, I always wondered, what happened to the letters between there? What happened between E and K? Well, that was, you know, they named stuff, and then they rearranged and deleted and messed around, and so, yeah, the, the other letters are missing. They're just gone. Vitamin K. Um, there's several forms of this as well, um, and those are going to differ only in this R group over here. This is a long carbon chain, and the length of it and how unsaturated it is um, cause the different forms of vitamin K. <coughs> For humans, um, about half the vitamin K that we need comes from our diet, and about half is synthesized by intestinal bacteria. The functions of it are the uh, blood clotting, it participates in the formation of prothrombin and five other proteins that are needed for blood clotting. It's also needed in the biosynthesis of proteins found in the plasma, your blood plasma, uh, bones, and kidneys. So, again, that's pretty important stuff. End of the chapter.